Lee, before your mum rudely interrupted us, <laughs> I'll, I'll have a word. To let you know that um, your dinner's ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were talking about young kids and th- how easy they've got it nowadays. Yeah, I like it. I, what I take from it, and I'm the, the same. Like we, we had to work, and my, I worked for my dad for free and stuff at the start. To Drafting. Try and, yeah, to try and make um, make it happen. But it's so common now for young kids to come into British Championship, and they say they're a motorbike racer because their dad puts money into the team, and the team runs them. And I'm like, this is not, you know what I mean? And they talk about figures now. So like to be a to do a, get a ride in a British Super Sport team now will be eighty grand, a hundred grand a year. And these kids... Are, You've got to pay that in, sorry, yeah, Lee. You've pay got to pay that, that in. You're to, not getting to, paid. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Top, yeah, someone, a doer, will get paid or yeah, things like that. The majority but to be a coming through. And these kids are 18, 19, 20. And they'll, they'll, I know this because I run the team. Now they go, oh, yeah, we, we'd like to ride for you. How much is it? 100 grand. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you've got no, no idea, idea what being on 10 quid an hour <laughs> and grafting. It's like you've said that there like it was 20 quid. Yeah. And your grannies give you pocket money. It's like the, the relevance to... But then I think, what on earth are you going to be like when you get out of this little bubble? Because you, you're intense. They're not good enough to actually make it, most mm-hmm. by people. So you think you've spent the guts of a million quid and then you get out the other side at 30 year old. You've got no house, no job, no qualification, you know, no nothing. And I wonder, what on earth are you going to do? Or But what's the, what's the value of fulfilling... Even if, if even if your dad's paying for it, the the fulfilling of a dream. I don't know. It's just a different background and a different. There's, there's different ways to fulfil that dream. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I just so. as in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 probably those kids. I look at some well-off families that can afford to do that at the moment, and the kids are giving it a hundred percent. And you know, I talk to some of those dads because they're, they're my age now, and and even the grandas, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know they want to help the kid because. Uh, well one is their kid you do anything for your kids and also but those families see a bit of talent there as well yeah. you know but but will happen in those clever families and there's a lot of them in the, the moto gp boys yeah. as well years ago uh, that kid will get this two or three years of that and then if the kid's not making it he's out he's yeah. back into the family business son <laughs> where you earn your yeah. money now yeah. and you graft and you go through education to get that you know it's just i know the lad you're talking about who not that particular person but the type where you know he's got that and a lot of those kids aren't interested in working no. you know mm-hmm. they wouldn't because have they're better off they for have riding have a bike do you know what I mean whereas we went racing to race because you wanted to race you ended up accidentally making a few quid out of racing and you were better off for it whereas if if you've got a load of money in the family and you're going racing just because you don't want to work, yeah. you're never going to beat some man that is hungry. racing hung, <laughs> like hungry, hungry proper hungry. Yeah, that can't be. He's had to suffer being in a crappy van, not eat, you know what I mean. And yeah. You know all the things, even the fact of going from Ireland. You know, we spoke to Cam Donald, which is on another level coming from Australia. But I remember doing starting to do British Championship, and you had kids at they're maybe from Brands Hatch area and they had to go to Oaten Park and they were like, oh, we have to drive all that way up yeah. north, like four hours. I'm like, you yeah, what? No we idea. we left home yesterday, <laughs> do you know what I mean? To sit on the overnight ferry from bloody Hollyhead at two in the morning because it was 50 quid cheaper than the daytime <laughs> boat. Like, you're like, you've got no... But then I, I now I appreciate, I think that's what made you me. You know, Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. And... I think Johnny Ray is a really good example of that, isn't yeah. it? You know, and we talk about him there adjusting to when there was no quick shift or no blipper. You know, he could That's adjust. That's hunger, yeah. yeah. He's still hungry. You know, that man's still hungry. And if he ever gets a bike again that's competitive, he's going to be there. Yeah. You yeah. know, I respect Johnny a big, big lot, the skill he has. But, you know, when you know the story about, you know, I, I actually... His granda <laughs> used to be good friends of mine. You know, we would go to Macau partying together. His granda, Joe Miller, and I, and we'd be think we were the boys having a bit of fun. You know, <laughs> but in the meantime, at home, Johnny's dad, who is Johnny as well, was working so hard. Yeah. You know, the half price ferry to get there for the next day, because you know Johnny has a lot of racing in his history. You know, oh. his motocross stuff, and he's a lot of injuries and a lot of beating up too. And you know, and he rode those Hondas. He, he's also a loyal person. He's rode those Hondas. Do you remember for so many years when they were yeah, he should have left he should have left he, three but, or four years but as hindsight I look at my career I should have done that you yeah. look at your oh yeah. if 
I would have done that two years earlier. You know, so it's all hindsight now, and and that's where it's also good to to have expert to have your your family to understand the business. It's like any job, you know, if your dad's an electrician and you've got an electrical company, you understand that from the word go. So, a lot of these people, like we'll say Johnny, his family knew the hard work and they yeah. weren't afraid to do it. And Johnny is really, I think, showing the appreciation of that today and rewarding his family it's, his there's country. very few sons that turn out better than their father you know because it's it's hard the father goes through all the hearty <laughs> like i like I, jesse's literally started riding a pw now and i would love him to do anything but ride a yeah. motorbike because i know the suffering do you know what i mean is. but for for like like johnny's dad was a bloody he's one tt you know he's a good yeah. a yeah. good rider and a good bloke and it's not very often that you have a, a son that's even better. Well, a lot, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. the, dr- the, the, the the drive and the force, the, the parents maybe not as pushy because they have made it. It's normally a parent that doesn't make it that yeah. ends up with a, a child that's driven because, because they're living. Yeah, it. yeah. he kind of paved the way for Johnny to, yeah, exactly. almost yeah. not easy street, but when, right, yeah. I've paved the way, you go down and, and, mm-hmm. and ride. But that could go one of two ways. Like, it could yeah, go it Johnny's could go, way. Yeah. Or they yeah. could they have the it so opposite, easy that, yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, the family from the the bit I think Jan well Johnny will tell you, he also, you know, his dad made him do his education. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So it wasn't just here we're going racing, son. <laughs> you better get educated as well. Yeah. So th- they were putting the safety net in. Yeah, the morals that, were right. Yeah, no the matter what. Right. Even though he was always special, do you know what I mean? Even from he got on the Red Bull rookie bikes between him and Eugene, they were like yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, the level was high, but even at that he was still sixteen and he was he was made be right, you know, by yeah. his education, like what Philip and that said. So let's go back to a conversation that we had earlier. Five in a week, and you said you would have quit. But you almost got there. We did four in a week. First person ever. It's only right that we talk about some TT. We've not actually touched on much of your TT career. So your first question is to irritate him. <laughs> That, that's a that's a nice start. Well, we can, do you we know what I mean? Ta- gonna, we, <laughs> the one thing that really pisses him off, you're going to ask him the well, first, yeah, co- yeah, the first yeah, question. Why, yeah. And then, and then yeah. Hutchie goes along a few years later yeah. and gets a five. And, yeah. but, well, hey, you said that. I didn't, I didn't should we just that. talk but, about Hutchie then, just to make it really... <laughs> well, we'll get on to that later. Hutchie's a good guy too. <laughs> so back to the, the, the truth about the whole thing. Yes, I loved racing. I mm-hmm. just wanted to ride, ride bikes. And it became number one in my life. But it couldn't. What I did work out, this can't keep going forever. You know what I mean? This putting me before my family, you know, I was married then. It was like, you know, we had a good life. You know, we were doing everything we wanted. The dream was all there and I was winning races. But dreams don't last forever. You know, it's like a good dream. You wake up, don't get <laughs> a yeah. good dream could become a nightmare pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to wake up before that dream ended, you know. So I wanted to win and I thought I could do it easy. Right, it, it wasn't going to be a problem. Uh, I'd won four, I'd won three TTs, I'd won four TTs, and and both those threes really, if you want to look back on, both those should have been fives. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It was silly mistakes or something that, you know, I ran out of petrol and one of them, uh, you know, the the ninety six one that should have been five, ever so easy, you know, because I had it all worked out. I won the F one. I was going to win the 250 on the Monday, no problem, you know, except for this guy called Dunlop was going to be a problem. But <laughs> but, but I had that all psyched out how I was going to do that, you know. Joey would run a hard, a medium rear tyre for four laps. Well, a 250 is easy to change a rear tyre with a single, yeah, single. And nobody done that. So I had a soft compound tar, rear tyre in for the first two laps. Everything was going good. I was, we were like swapping seconds for the lead. And I hadn't even started trying yet. You know, I was trying, yeah, but was, uh, there was loads left. And uh, in the reef, we stopped the fuel and the boys made a mess of mine. I lost, you know, five or six seconds. And I come out and I got the first thing and I said, minus, in this, and it, it was a mistake I made. I got the first signal at Glen Helen or whatever, minus five or minus seven. And I go, oh no. And I tried to make all that time up in one lap and I'd never ever rode as hard in my life anyone who watched that lap from there on will tell you this 250 was going through every corner with both wheels sliding <laughs> i remember it coming into rent cullen up in the air when i landed the thing was full over and it was sliding towards that curb but i was still in control no problem yeah. you know and just when you felt it was going to break away i lifted it flipped it around the left right over that what a, i was having what a time and that last one, just chin on the tank right through, you know, before Balaf Bridge out there, just, ah, oh, beautiful stuff. <laughs> and I got a signal somewhere there, and I had 
pulled it somewhere there. I'd, I'd pulled it back to two seconds or something. Yeah. So that was one crazy, crazy speed to be doing mm-hmm. through that. And quarry bends, I come through there. And I remember, I thought it's easy. I was doing things that I hadn't done before, but I had all this in theory left in reserve for when I needed it. And it's like we talk, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. So quarry bends, I thought it was no problem. So every time coming into quarry bends, you knock it off. Yeah. You knock it off, you go through the right. You only use half the road, don't yeah. you? And then you line up and you do the left. Well, because if you <laughs> if you go too far, it closes the next corner. What yeah. it means is you wanted to stay right to open up the next. The left, yeah, the next but that's on a big bike. Yeah. So and two fifty is just a toy, isn't yeah. it? So I thought no problem. I'm going through there flat, right? If I use all. Bear in mind, he was back. Yeah, you were. <laughs> when he means roll off, so well. there's probably a difference in. <laughs> how, like he's not talking two or three mile an hour here. There's a difference in a lot of <laughs> mile an hour. Yeah, people talk about flat out. You hear them flat out to me. It it's, stays there. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't not move. rolling. And and people call flat out. They do this. Yeah. They roll it off and they call that flat out. Yep, flat out is stays Wide there. Wide open. You know. So I come into quarry bends, <laughs> flat. No problem. Wasn't worried about it. You know. And around the right, I come funny, I was talking to a little man yesterday who allegedly thinks his friend still has it all on video. So he's going to hunt it for me. Yeah. I've got a lot of pictures of it, like, anyway. And so I thought, no problem. I'm coming in there, flat stuck. I'll use three quarters of the road. It's only a toy, so I'll pull it back. I'll pull it left, and there'll not be a problem. Oh, Jesus. You know, <laughs> I got through flat. And what I didn't see, and if you go back now and look at it, the camber on the road Jesus changes on the, other side. <laughs> on the other side more than... I've ever noticed before. Yeah, because you were never out there. I never out there. <laughs> yeah. And the minute and I just chin on the tank, and the minute I crossed the line, the front just started to plus, fold in. Plus, he's when the bike's flat out. Obviously, the weight's off the front tire. Yeah. When if you don't need to brake a lot, I know it's a bit less than a two stroke because yeah. there's no engine <laughs> brake, but the bike will still naturally pitch and oh, create yeah. the bike to want to turn and load the front tyre. So all these things, Philip, <laughs> Philip didn't, he had, it was flat out <laughs> and the bike wasn't pitching or loading the front tyre and the camber was on the wrong <laughs> the wrong way. So so it was an accident waiting to happen, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it? You know, and it just kept on turning and I kept on turning thinking, I'm going to grab it, you know, it's no problem. I'm just going to come back. Is. Yeah, I didn't see if it did. So oh. it just keeps on turning on the line on the road. There's a thin black line that just gets thicker and thicker, you know, <laughs> and then blue paint starts, you know, and I was so lucky, really. It's right up the road, over the footpath, along the grass, back off the footpath, on the road, and then I stop at the big rocks, you know, <laughs> at the, the side of the, the mountain there. Yeah. And... Uh, and I could hear, while I was sliding up the road, I could hear the crowd going, ah! I could hear all that. The whole place just went, uh, and um, so I get up anyway. I don't have not a problem here. <laughs> and actually, I pick a bike up the amount of luck involved in this whole situation is <laughs> one's... Or I'll scale. Oh, yeah. Even you what way to crash on the right. Well, actually, you know oh. the truth is oh, you do. Oh, you do, yeah, but... but... But this one was a lot oh. better out of control. But actually, do you know what? I wasn't even worried because I could see while I was tossing around and sliding, I'd seen what you worry about in a crash is an impact. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah, that's a slide isn't a problem. Do you know what I mean? It's a sudden stop at the end that hurts you. That hurts, yeah. you know what I mean? So if there's no impact, you're going to be okay. And I actually was thinking while I was sliding about getting back. You know what I mean? And uh, so I stopped. And I, I stand up, and then all the crowd cheered or clapped or something, and I'm I'm walking backwards. You know, now you didn't realise I knew I was hurt, but I knew all the things are working. If I'm walking, the legs is working. Yeah. I was sh- while I'm walking, you'll see my arms moving. So I'm I don't want to look like an idiot, do I? So I'm walking. I'm checking the arms is moving. I'm checking the old touch. You do the old touch, t- t- <laughs> old touch <laughs> test. Everything right. <laughs> and I get back again then, and um, so it was all lucky stuff but so back to the story so that should have been that was 90 whatever year that was that should 96 Six, yeah i should have won the 250 on the saturday and the monday no problem the 600 i'm gonna say that was mine because i was riding that bike so good and stuff it wasn't going to be a problem and then the thing but that gave me a beating up and uh on the 600 and the, on the wednesday i was sore i don't think i broke anything but i was beat to death 150 mile an hour crash oh yeah getting tossed it's not nice, it's gonna, is it? You know, <laughs> don't jump out your sunroof at 150 mile an hour down the motorway. No one would. No and one uh, would. I, no sensible person. Yeah. And so Ian Simpson then, he caught me. He was the one behind me in the 600 race, and he caught me. 
and he just all he had to do was stay out and win the race. Yeah. You know, and I tried, but I just didn't have the power. My arms wouldn't work, my thing. And I was, <laughs> I remember for the first couple of laps through Quarry Bends, I was a little bit <laughs> nervous, <laughs> nervous. You know, but by the end of that race, I had got that back yeah. again. It was no problem. And I finished second in that 600 race. And Ian won at Fern Square. We can't take nothing away. But I was so wound up. And I met people along. I was, so on, the, I was on the prom midweek, and uh, Sean McStay was one of the lads who used to race from Tandre Gee. And, and his mate, who, sorry, I forget your name at the moment, but I do know you, you know that, he takes pictures. I met them in the prom down the front, and they're going, Philip, you know, it's all over now, you know, and I said, like, what do you mean all over? It's the worst thing anyone can ever <laughs> yeah, say, said, isn't it? Like? And he goes, what do you mean it's all over? He goes, well, like, you know, isn't he, like, I said, I'm going to win. I said, don't worry, I'm going to win both of those races. I'm not sure if the Wednesday's race was over or not, but I goes, I'm going to win the rest of the week anyway, and I'm going to win both those races on Friday. And... They sort of looked at me. I remember, I remember them looking me right in the eye, and I says, "Don't worry." And off I goes again. I was, I was still, I was winning that race before it ever started on Friday. Yeah. And Friday was a tough one because I'm beat up well, right? And the production race was a three lap race in the morning on the fire blade, and the senior was a six lap in the afternoon. It's a lot of riding. Isn't it? That's a lot of riding, <sighs> isn't it? Isn't it? So I started off the production race right in the fire blade, and I got a signal. At Glen Howell again, something like minus seven, minus five is good. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get my head down. I really wanted, what I wanted to do each time was, I wanted to win those races all as easy as possible. Yeah. I didn't want to go in that reserve. You know, the bit we've got, you dig deep here, because it could go wrong when you dig deep, you know. And uh, so I got the signal at, at Glen Howell, <laughs> minus seven. Oh, God, not again. And... Uh, I did take it easy for the first, not the you, first you, lap. You, would you say you learned a little bit from from the quarry? Brands? From the quarry, uh, <laughs> that was a mistake. What, what you done there? <laughs> you, you analysed that afterwards, yeah. just like we've done there, talking between us afterwards. It was my fault. It was a mistake. Yeah, you made yeah, a mistake. Yeah. Don't do that again. You know, you've had a slap on the wrist now. Just a very yeah, a big yeah. slap on the wrist. Don't do that again. You know, and uh, I thought, oh no, minus seven, minus five, whatever it was. Right, get the head down again here. And it was damp, it was patchy. So I just, I light this bike up like never before again in the fire blade. I'd never rode it this hard. Th that was, that was 97, whatever year it was. And uh, Ian Simpson will remember it. He was on his Ducati, which was going to be a better bike in theory yeah. than a fire blade. But we can go back to it later. But I was the main R&D rider in the early 90s on that fire blade before it was developed. So I was the number one test rider in that mm -hmm. bike. I was part of the R&D team on the fire blade when it came out in 92. So I couldn't let, my boss, really, my Japanese boss was Mr. Baba. He was the project leader <laughs> on that. Sorry for project. laughing at that. I, mean, I thought he just made that up there. No, no, <laughs> go back, Mr. Baba. And That's we're, we're all over the place here, but it's interesting. So he was the project leader on the fire blade. We can cover that story later. So I could not not win the production race on a fire blade because that was built to be the bike Don't of the forget. world yeah. and beat everybody. So, and I remember thinking of him, and I'm not sure it was that year or the year before, this is just a quick one. I was on the start line, and Mr. Baba comes over, it's all on the thing, and he taps me on the shoulder, he goes, ah, good luck, Philip. I goes, yeah, it's okay, Mr. Baba, no problem at all. He goes, good luck, but you must win. <laughs> you must win. <laughs> the worst yeah. possible thing and anyone yeah. could ever. It didn't matter to me, because nobody, nobody could give me more than I was already given. So anyway, I like this bike up, and... There's nothing going to stop me. This is where you've got to be so careful in road racing because psychologically, I'm into the sports psychology, I'm into everything, I'm going to win this race. But there's that wee edge on a motorbike you could cross the line on. And I came through Glen Helen and all this stuff. And uh, Ginger Hall, sorry, right. Do you know, and you know you come around the right hand or after Ginger, the left down, round the right, yeah. you flick the left and then there's a jump after it. Yeah. Well, round that left, there's damp patches there, right? The thing turns sideways. How right. fast are these turns around there? Uh, fast enough not to be going sideways <laughs> in the wet. 120? Yeah. yeah. Right? So I'm round the right. I'm really climbing all over this bike. I'm still a bit stiff. Forget about the injuries. We've had the painkillers. We're on it. And uh, round the left. Oh, just there was This thing was just against the stop everywhere. It goes completely sideways. The people there will remember this. So I take off and that jump sideways. Oh, God. Where are you heading? Not where you want to be. Heading. Not where you want to be, right? Yeah. Somehow, 
I saved that bike, right? It landed sideways. I ripped the bars off that bike and down the road. We put down the road, I realised now, these handlebars are 30 degrees. <laughs> this is the honest truth. <laughs> right? Twisted the bars. Twisted the bars and the yokes, right? The yokes twisted. So now, every single bump I'm going over, when this bike lifts, I've got to guess the position. So the bars, the wheels. So the wheels are so still going straight, you know? <laughs> This is where the engineer came out in and made the protractor or the what's the angle thing <laughs> yeah, called? The protractor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which protractor. Is, you know, anyone normal would pull in, wouldn't it? You know, but, yeah. but I couldn't. I wanted these wins. And this went on. Well, when I got to Rams, I, just after the hairpin, whatever, I get the thing like uh, minus nothing or plus, yeah, plus nothing. Or yeah, uh, plus nothing. You know what I mean? And poor old Simo, when he got there and he's seen, you know, <laughs> from his plus seven to his nothing, he goes, there's only one person could be doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I finished that race, but it was it was like it was the toughest. It was a race where, like you know, you can imagine going over at um, what do you call the real fast one? We go up the hill and over oh, the top. Or, or Crosby. Crosby, even, yes, yeah. Crosby. That was the worst one. Yeah, yeah. Crosby over that up to 170 or 80 yeah. miles an hour. Then trying to guess the right thing for, the th and also the forks weren't working right. Right, because when you twist the fork, it can't go up and down. Yeah. It's like dragging Lips, up and yeah. down. Yeah. So the front wheel now isn't working right. This suspension in the front, you're trying to load it, just like you said. So what I was doing in every corner, I was touching, not only was I lapping it off, I touched the brake a little bit to get just it to, to load it, the yeah. front yeah. to make sure those forks were going down. Because all the angle changes, when the fork's down, you know, the geometry changes and the bike won't turn. So I had to make sure this bike was down for every turn. So when you talk about the computer, the calculating, looking back on what I had to do now to win that race around. was unreal. So I get back to the paddock, no problem. I think, mm, no problem. You know, that was a good one. I won the race. <laughs> Didn't matter anymore, did it? And Dennis, who was there, one of the boys, they wheeled the bike and saw the thing, almost dropped it. They had the bar straight and wheeled it. The bike went the wrong way. <laughs> Just went going off to the side. <laughs> and they go, what the hell? Here's me, tell you later. <laughs> so... Uh, Anyway, that was so I won that Fireblade race. So you see, after winning that, the senior wasn't going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With straight bars. It was just, but I think the toughest one on that race was Jim Moody. He was on a fi on the five hundred Honda, uh, the V twin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which was a very very good bike and light round there. So I just had to watch the signals, and then also on that one, that must be ninety seven. Uh, I almost had a big one off at the Black Dub, because. I was. Uh, I've, I've seen that on you. I saw that on yeah, you. Funnily enough, I watched yeah, it this morning. Yeah. Well, that was that one was time in my life, right? I was going to go for the lap record, right? So I'd won that. It sounds to me that every yeah. single race he was in and every lap he was doing, he was going for the <laughs> lap record. So for him to turn around and go, oh, well, you know, funny enough, that. I was going to go for the lap record in that lap. Somehow well, I don't believe that that was the only, the only the time, time he was when he was trying a thousand percent all the other time. Yeah, but the thousand percent was, was to, to win. win. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then there's the reserve. Yeah. You know, we go into the reserve here. So anyway, that race, I'd done that race. We'd done all the pit stops. I've now adjusted because there's a lot of adjusting between bikes, as you know. Yeah. Like if you get off, you know, a 600 and ride a super stock, the braking point's different, isn't it? The entrance point's different. The apex is probably the same, but the entrance and the exit's different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was now happy. The signals was this 750. I was clear. I'd won that race. And now... I wanted to get the head down because I'd never had a course record. You know, you know when he said he, he you always win at the slowest speed, <laughs> and when you've got a comfortable lead, you don't take the reserves. Yeah, he's lying because he's he's got all them things right now, and then he's went. Oh, I'm just going to go get that yeah. record. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just a switch. It's either on or off. Yeah, it's all on or off. That is it. Yeah. So I rode that after I came through start and finish. It was all clear, good signals, last lap. Um, we we're on it, and. I thought, right, I felt so good, I knew I could go fast, comfortable, every corner good, all the rest. And I used to love that. <laughs> Funny, a girl sent me a video yesterday through the black dub of me coming round. I was going to cry. I looked like a pensioner. You know? <laughs> <laughs> when, when that was one of my favourite yeah. sections, you know, I could come into that, just tip that bike right in the side, feel it moving. Just, you know, you go light, pick it up, tip it into yeah. the right, and the gas on, right? Mm -hmm. I was gassing that everywhere. Well, it went sideways, didn't it? Again, it was a camber in that road. If you look at it now, yeah, when your gas runs off, changes, yeah. doesn't it? it run off and the bike let go. So it did the big black lines yeah. there and the stuff. Shit. So I knock it off. <laughs> Feet are all over. Yeah, I knock it off. But 
think it's no problem. You know? Yeah, when you're committed, that's the big thing about confidence. He's full of confidence, so that he'll have forgot about that. Not even five hundred meters yeah. after, but if you're did enough confidence, oh my days, that's you're it. Pulling your head, yeah, yeah, your head's yeah. gone. You. So then I started to think, right? So that was a slide there. The next left hander's flat out. Then the next one you is not back it's yeah. down two years, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, you can't get those mixed up, you know, because poor Rob Holton lost his life yeah. there, and I think that's what happened to him, you know. They're, they're fast. They look exactly the same corner, but yeah. one, the first one's flat out and the second one's back too. And then, so, but right. to look at, they look, you know. They look identical, yeah. you know what I mean? And also, we talked about Sean McStayler earlier. He fell off his RG500 there doing that one, you know, where uh, back in the, it was a uh, Tom Toppings or Toppings 500 Suzuki, he fell off. And, uh, so the minute I got around the first one, no problem, I started to think. And you know what I thought about? I thought, the boys didn't put enough petrol on that bike. Because, again, I'm watching, because I'm a calculator, I keep saying calculator, I mean, I com- I'm a computer, right? You're a computer. And uh, so I, and the, the, in the, all the bikes, we had foam in the tanks, you know, yeah. to stop the fuel. Well, that fuel had to go right over the foam to the top to have enough laps, to have enough fuel. And I remembered that fuel didn't go over the foam. haven't got enough petrol right at that point in the right uh, yeah so you've yeah. not had any issues with it bogging down or anything no no like not no no i wouldn't have got to that point yet, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, still had, he's still another maybe or 10 liters yeah. To, yeah, still, to get round but not to the finish line right. right i thought oh shit we have enough fuel you know and so there was my lap record I just to, i was working it all out right forget about the lap record just get this bike home yeah and i never just say that bike was going to 13,000. I never revved that bike above 11 or 12, the rest of that lap. So I didn't, nowhere. And I was watching the time still. I was still safe in the time. So it was that got over the line, get in the pits and it goes, they want the, you know, the fuel sample yeah, yeah, they after want that. after the thing. There was nothing left in the tank. There was maybe an egg cup full of fuel left. So had I kept on riding for oh, that, you wouldn't even have got to the bungalow. You would, no, yeah. you'd run out like the top of the mountain. Yeah. So was the you foam know. to stop it going? Well, you have to have around. it now, even yeah. So it's a safety thing as well. Like it's like for a, weight. Or? Yes. Yeah. The the fuel uh, w- was full of foam to stop the fuel slapping everywhere. Yeah. Right, going from side to side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if it's supposed to help with coming out and stuff as well. Do you know if there is an accident and stuff like it yeah. slows right. down and. But yeah, because you have to, you get checked for it in scrutiny and you can't not have it. Do you know what I mean? It's right. not a preference to, to team or bike or anything. Do you, you stick it in or do you just... Yeah, you just push it down into uh, the tank. In strips, right. push it into your tank right. and it stops that. But it was a good one to measure fuel. Mm-hmm. And so it's wonderful how your brain works. You know, and I just remembered after that It is slide, at that point in the, oh, yeah. in the race. Yeah. It was like, no, it takes a good moment to get the old brain fired yeah. up. Yes, I, because I was... Actually... Because <laughs> it's really hard to focus on two things at once. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? So you're either going to win the race or you're going for the lap and I've never yeah. really I've never really went for lap records at times like that because it's a long race you know it's 225 miles mm-hmm. and you know it's it, you want to be as easy and the last lap as you know if you've got a lead you're just nursing you don't you hear you're these every wee rattle. yeah you hear these wee rattles and this bike something's wrong but there's nothing wrong you know but it just I felt good but it was so there was no petrol left so that was one another one that year that should have been five wins and that's three, we're going back to the real story at the end. So then 97, that was 97 maybe, I'd done that. And then 98, I was the best year of my life in theory set up, you know. I had my factory, full-blown factory RC45 that Dennis went to Japan to build, you know. And my fire blade, Mr. Baba, had given me everything possible to make up the best in the world. My 600 was not a problem, I was winning on that every week. And then then I go and break my back two weeks at Thruxton a couple mm-hmm. of weeks before it. I was in pole position for the super sport race. Michelin had given me these trick hard tires, you know, that yeah, Thruxton's really hard. You think you are the boy, don't get in, all these people are looking after you because they want to win TTs. And I, I took it easy for the first lap, second lap. And I remember, I could see the, the front opening up a wee bit because I see you doing it, I watch you, you know, and uh, I thought, right, get the gas on. Oh, one of those left-handers after start and finish, there's a second or third yeah, year one. Just, yeah, fly out left, yeah. Yes, when the minute I gassed it, didn't it fire me about 20 feet into the air? Mm. What a high sider, you know. Go, it goes up listening to other people, because I don't even remember it. I, I do when I was on the ground, and I landed on my arse and just drove it up my back, and oh. I broke, done three vertebrae in at the bottom of my spine. How, you how, know. when did you, were you knocked out now? 
I was, but I remember lying on the ground and the people there and the pain. We've had pain, right? But the pain was out of this world. The pain was unreal, you yeah. know? And it was a really, really scary time because when I hit the ground, I couldn't feel my feet. Yeah. And anyone who's had experience, you know, it's... Oh, You've done the old touch test or the move test. And, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. It was like, here, mm. you're in trouble this time. Yeah. And I was laying on the ground thinking, TT, TT, you know, and all the bags. So I'm laying in hospitals in that hospital down there for a few days. And uh, Dennis called me and Dave Hancock called me and all. My RC45 had just arrived in Louth sent me the pictures of this beautiful <sighs> carbon fiber everything you know just what you want to see yeah just to depress you a bit <laughs> yeah. more when you're and lying. it's like it, what a horrible horrible two or three days in hospital my life was over right i'm racked this was going to be the tt of my life mm -hmm. to win everything and i'm lying here by now very very lucky the the next day feeling came back into yeah. my legs and came back into my feet but that 24 hours was this, I can understand what happens to people with accidents yeah. now. It's the most rottenest feeling in your life, you know? And, and we things like that are also a wee bit of a wake up to you. You know, that's a, a good, good warning here. Yeah, not invincible. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not this. And um, so I'd done a deal with Dave. But what happened uh, really was v &M had a team that they ran with uh, Rudder and Simo in it yeah. in the BSB stuff. They had their RC45s for the BSB. And VNM was like my opposition, really. <laughs> you know, it was I was this McCallum. Yeah, these were quality bikes as well. They oh were like, yes, yeah. They were oh. Like, so Jack Valentine yeah. and Steve Meller. Well, that's what VNM. Yes, was, they yeah. built good stuff. So we when we went through all our years, really. VNM wanted to be the best road race team, as you yeah. know, and they were good guys, were good riders. You know, like the Simpsons, the Rudders, yeah. uh, Jeffries. Jeffries mm -hmm. was with them. Um, the other guy was with them who's now Moody a team man. Moody well, was yeah. for them and Pete Thing was with them. Peter, I forget his name now, but there's a lot of good riders with them. But I used to pep them boys and all the roads, you know. So what we done, we done a deal. I'm now in hospital, racked everything, all the rest. And Dave Hancock was looking after the Honda UK stuff at the time because there was no manager. Tuxworth used to be our sort of UK team manager, but he was looking after World Superbikes now and the whole thing was diluted. So Dave Hancock and Honda was trying to keep it the best they can. V and M, I don't know what happened and I don't want to know, but Bob McMillan fell out with V and M that sort of week. I don't know what happened and took the bikes off them, whatever. So it meant there was Dave goes, right, we've got a problem here, Philip. You know, V and M's just they got the fell apart, right? So we've got two riders and uh, no bikes. We've got all your bikes and no rider. What are we going to do? So I won't tell you the agreement because it's nobody's business. But Dave and I done an agreement over the phone when I'm lying in hospital that my team will run the Honda stuff at the TT. I've got the bikes. Dennis, the mechanic. I have the team of mechanics for all the bikes, the 600 things and the thing. And they'll run it. And so will, this, will this have been city colours? Yes, city yeah. colours. So that's the time when you've seen uh, Simpson and Rudder riding my... Yeah. So I have two 600s, they had one so each. Like blue bikes with red city riding? Yes, I had mm -hmm. blue and a yeah. white down. Right. You know, it was Motorcycle City. Yeah. It was a big company in England then. You know, we had... Actually, at the end of that, we had 22 shops in the UK. Yeah. And uh, so we went to the northwest. Rudder and Simpson had one of my 600s and each. Um, part of my deal with Dave was, we like going to do all that, my bikes must win. <laughs> my you became the Mr. Bob. So he's now he's now he past the win. thousand percent ratio <laughs> on to these two poor blokes that were were quite happily riding their bikes. I, well, so I suppose with you out of the with you out of yeah. the picture, they it had a good took, chance. Took a bit of the opposition yeah. away, but my financial deal and my thing with the whole team to survive was <laughs> that. And Dave will verify all this. Is no problem when he listens to this. That the we still must win. My bike still must win. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we won the 600s, no problem. The 750s, I can't remember. Rudder Simpson won them. The Northwest. Yeah, and the, Rudder the was TT. Rudder would have been hard to beat for you. Like at yes. the Northwest, he was renowned. Yes, he was, mm -hmm. he was a good goer. And so that all ended well. And then Jim Moody actually at the TT won the Fireblade race. But it did. Fireblade race. Sorry, production race. Production and, race. Uh, but it didn't matter as long as the Fireblade won it for Mr. Baba, you know. So the whole thing ended good. That was 98 over. And I still hadn't got my five wins, so right. So I was going to give it one last try in 99. I'd sort of I'd had all those little warnings, so I know by now your time's up, Philip. You know, you're now on 
borrowed time nearly. Yeah. You know, I'd had little warnings like that. I'd rode over the edge where I shouldn't have had. It was my own fault. I analysed them all. But right, we've got to just back this back a wee percent here. Give it one final year, and that's it. It quit at ninety nine, and don't ask me what happened. All we're not going to it in this podcast, but Honda and I fell out. Right, mm. <laughs> at, <laughs> I think we need to go into that. At, at, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> at the end of ninety eight, it was like it was a sad end, and really, it was you know a bit of a Bob McMillan thing and stuff. And by that time, I was injured. I was sponsored by Motorcycle City, but I actually started to work with Motorcycle City then. Yeah in their after sales department. So for years I'd talked to Andy Smith, who was a great guy in Yamaha. So this was the opportunity for me then to ride Yamahas, which had been always, the offer was always there with Andy Smith if we needed bikes. And Motorcycle City was Yamaha's biggest customer. They were also Honda's biggest customer. Mm -hmm. So it worked out good. So we were starting off 99 with a new R6. By this time anyway, an R6 was better than a CBR. A Fireblade R1, sorry, an R1 I had to admit in my life was now better. Moody won that TT in 98, but the Fireblades was taken, uh, the R1s were taken over with David Jeffries, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I had a super stock R1, no problem. I had the Trekka 600 I could get, and we built an F1 R1 that was out of this world, right? It was like so. so the first think, was that the was first year with the R one? No, the second, the second year they were racing. They come out in eighty eight, didn't they? Or eighty nine? Yeah. They come out ninety nine, ninety nine, ninety. Sorry, yeah. they come out in ninety eight, and this was ninety nine. Yeah. But they'd already proven they were the bike to be. Yeah. yeah, and he wasn't bitter against Honda, so he wasn't like trying yeah. to prove it. Just to clear that up, yeah. do you know what I mean? No, I feel it. If Baba's watching this and he's, he wasn't bitter against yeah. the, the fire. There was a little bit of hurt there, you know yeah. what I mean? So what I wanted to do was, and actually it's the same as sort of Michael Dunlop wants to do at times. You know, Michael wants to take another bike and show that it's him, not the bike. And and he's done that, Michael. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. won on Kawasaki's, Yamaha's, Honda's, a lot. So at this stage, in 99, the Yamahas were definitely better than the Hondas. So I'd made the right choice. I had all the right bikes. I had everything. And I was going to teach right. the world a lesson and prove to everyone that I am the best road racer and I'm going to bow out. I, I didn't say that at the time, but in my mind it was, we're going to win all these races and I'm bowing out in 99. It's all yeah. over. So the thing started off good. You know, I'd done, I was doing uh, British stuff, but it wasn't... It was to be there to ride, a bit like Michael Dunlop's doing now, you know, and, and Dean Harrison does. Yeah. Oh, I don't mean that as an insult to Dean, because Dean is a bloody yeah, good short yeah, circuit yeah. rider, mm -hmm. but those boys are using that all as practice for their TT, learn how to slide bikes. The whole lot was going good, and then I'd I done a run at the Tandrigi 100, so this R1 was just all built up. First time out, I took it to the Tandrigi 100 as a road race practice before the yeah. Northwest, you know. I should have won both super bike races. I won one, lost the other one. But this was a brand new bike that wasn't set up right. I felt good. Everything was, I'm going to be the king here. And on the Sunday I went, to, I think it was Donington Park, to uh, ride the production bike to get the feel of it. So happy with the R6, going to win. Uh, this F1 Yamaha was going to win. And actually that bike was sold then to McAdoo after that. And Ran Falk, where I rode it for four years. Yeah, winning on it. So that's how good it was. Yeah. And... Um, Bloody hell, I slid off at Donington, right, and a guy, I know him, but I never can remember his name, drove and smacked me right in the middle of my back, right? And I've still got the leathers with the black mark on that shoulder blade, right? And way back in 92, I crashed in Daytona. I was actually going well there. I was, we can cover that year, another year, 92. But I had a massive, massive crash in Daytona. The front tire exploded on the last lap, you know? going through start and finish like like Barry Sheen yeah exact same yeah. place yeah front tire exploded and it ripped what we didn't know so I come in into turn one touch the brakes there's no brakes what do you do turn one 180 mile an hour dropping in Daytona mm -hmm. it's all over isn't it yeah. so I lift the bike up the old brain work on what to do I jump on the back brake, but then I go whop into the barriers. There is an overrun of a couple of hundred metres, yeah. but a couple of hundred metres is <coughs> 180 miles long with no brakes. Yeah. It just gives you more time to get worried. It does all yeah. it does. So I'm, but no, I'm not giving up yet. I'm still trying to steer this baby on I rack and there's a space between the barriers, don't I? You know, to get <laughs> through. <laughs> well, I caught the barriers with a shoulder, right? Ripped, just snapped the collarbone off, took the shoulder blade right off the back. You know, I didn't wake up for a couple of days and 
in a medical center in Florida somewhere, you know. But anyway, so this shoulder's always been them. A few years after that, I had a crash at the Ulster Grand Prix whenever uh, a lad called Steve Johnson lost his life. Uh, there I was going into, I forget the corner, the left-hander, we start going up the back. I'm really useless with names. Uh, where Guy that's Martin that's crashed that's there. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. That left-hander. Yeah, just I was, after the road end. And then yes, I was going in there, and he touched my back wheel, and we both come off, and unfortunately, he lost his life. But when I was somersaulting through that field, there was one set of rocks, and I landed on it, right? On the shoulder blade, <laughs> right? So this shoulder blade that's recovering now beautifully splits into three bits. So... <laughs> This, and then Donington is the same. Aye, so this, that's a few years before it, obviously, but it's getting, but it's weak. It's been just well beat mm -hmm. up, it's weak, you know. Well, when that guy hit me up Donington right on it, I felt this, he's done something here. You know, you know the one, don't you? Yeah. You feel something's happened here. So that was okay. We just get a bit of treatment, a bit of stuff. The Northwest is two weeks later, ready to go. And uh, this is my big warm up. Of course, I want to win all the Northwest, don't I? I want to win the everything. And it was what a race, really, because David Jeffries, I think it was Simpson, Moody, and myself were all fighting out on Yamahas yeah. for the 600s and stuff. But in the very first race of the day, I'm coming down to the Metropole. Practice went good, all set up, and I feel this pop, bang, right in my shoulder. And I thought, a rock's hit me. This is how bad this was. This felt like a rock had hit me in the shoulder, right? But you know what really happened? The shoulder blade came off the back. Right. Just from breaking. Just yeah, from yeah because it had been loosened again. You know, it, it, it was smashed up a couple of times yeah. in previous years. And, and you're on, it's a left hand corner. So yeah. You know I mean? Yes. And All the weights on it. The just, and that guy hit me in the back had just moved. Uh, uh, and I didn't realise the time when he hit me, but it obviously loosened it again. And then the brakes went pop. And that was the shoulder blade coming off my back. That was the end of that. Well, it actually wasn't because I still <laughs> rode the rest of the day. <laughs> and uh, I managed actually some second and third places, which was unreal. Oh, yeah. You know, like with this R1, that's now the most powerful bike out there and my stuff. It's all in the pictures. I don't think I got a win that day, but I had seconds and thirds, but I was crippled, you know. And we then try to work out what's going to happen at the TT. You know, so I go to the best faith healers in the world. I go to the decompression <laughs> chambers, everything in the world with this wish and dream. Even though, look, it's not yeah, going to recover, knew. is it? Yeah. So no it's uh, we've got to recover for the TT. So I do practice at the TT. Very, very easy. You know, get the whole thing. We're being careful. And what we do is this crisscrossing of bandages. You know, over it's like strap to help hold it in place. Yeah. Which you shouldn't really do, I suppose, but. I felt it was in place, and I felt we're getting better because you wish, you know, what you what you wish for, you feel, uh, yeah. don't mm -hmm. you? Whether it's real or not, and uh, funny, the exact same corner. So I'm at the TT out on the F1 race to give it a bit of hell. The exact same corner, the black dub. I get a slide and put it on my R1. It's on film as well, right? <sighs> That's it. It's all over. So I pull in that race. TT, we have a talk, boys. I, I could cry. I want to die. I've just, I've let you all down. You know, I've let Yamaha down. Who put faith in me to win? I've let Motorcycle City down. I've let my team down. It's all over, you know. And um, so I, I pulled out of the rest of the races that week. And then on the Friday, I had to give it one more go, didn't I? On the Friday for the production race, which was like the easiest bike to ride in theory, I got a third place. But a third place, the TT is good, but it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't a win. So that was all the warnings I had. And you're never going to win your five. You've got to put it in reality. You're never going to win five TTs, Philip. You've had three chances, four chances in a row here. You haven't got, you're not going to. So just quit racing. And that was it. And that was it. So it didn't, my career didn't end the way I wanted it mm -hmm. to. But look, I'm well and healthy. Yeah, you've got a good uh, life after racing. And that was it. Yeah, you, yeah. So well, let's, I, let's not brush over the fact that you did still, you still got four. And that and no one got that f until that other that other guy. I can't remember. Yeah, I forget his name. You know, <laughs> and the, a lot of my records, like have held for a long, long time still. And so now, when you look back on it, you know, a good one, which you're joking again about yesterday at your expense. You know, was you know the lap record of Scarborough, for instance. I held that course record for ten years. Yeah. 
for 10 years and it was only beaten uh, I think it was Guy Martin beat it when he was on his top tune on a Jixer 1000 mm -hmm. and I'd done that on a 750 Honda and Lee and that was out of Scarborough and also uh, I think Dean, Dean Harrison, Harrison yeah. won well you know Dean Harrison is still two seconds a lap slower around Scarborough than I was you know and Lee on his RC45 about four or five. Oh yeah seconds slower and the money they have spent on those bikes and the power they yeah. had now was greater than we had then so and tires is better so it's not i'm not insulting anyone because to get those speeds around scarborough is unreal but it's only when you look back on it you go like yeah how did you do that yeah like what's scarborough not like at those speeds oh like? yeah the road's a bit this way normally and it's about that way when you're <laughs> when you're trying yeah it's a terrific little place really it's not designed for mod they don't you don't we're not allowed to ride big we only ride six hundreds yeah. now for that reason that it's too it's too, too small narrow. for for like a modern superbike now is an animal of a thing yeah. compared to compared to a six hundred, so they're not allowed to they're not allowed to go there. So do you look but back on those four and now you can look at it and be proud of it with yeah. contentment or yes yeah, still, yeah with yeah. contentment yeah. yeah you know i'm happy you know i i wake up every morning thinking glad i'm alive yeah. you know what i mean and and i'm having fun and you know last year we went mountain biking yeah, yeah. together you yeah. and i here in the a big crash then as well <laughs> but that was a great <laughs> one loves a crash <laughs> it, uh, a new bike and a new course yeah, that took me that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, thousand percent philip was, was straight in again that's, that's all i'm gonna anytime i'm speaking to anyone now, i go oh, philip mccall no no you mean thousand percent philip <laughs> that, uh, that's it so we just you know I, I ride mountain bikes now because you just you can't go at those speeds anymore and you know yesterday at the tt was a reality wake up of that but i knew that but the, the old brain needs Puts to be it in yeah i need to you need to print it into this computer like that's yeah. impossible so the, the thing really i do now is you know i love what i do every day you know i ride this i'm still a big part of the tt as you know on that and i try to give my knowledge back to you know the spectators and tell those the spectators is the people that keep this place going mm -hmm. you know so if i can give them knowledge back and tell them about a course and you know that's all i can do i'm not bikes and speeds has changed so much that i'm no good to any newcomers now mm -hmm. you know milky does a really good job oh, yeah. of that and the team he has so i'm plus it's probably not best to be telling a newcomer <laughs> yeah <laughs> any of this you know any of this any of mm. this uh yeah, we're, we're Milky and Barry blessed them are trying to calm these kids down of the 20 minutes with Philip McCall and the, their thousand percent ratio would off the, yeah the would not be helping the poor the poor kid yeah oh no. maybe in a few years at time but not not at the start yeah so so I'm no good at that but you've got to look at like what you're good for and yeah. not you know so the stuff I am good for at the TT is is the PR and getting the work out there and and there's other people you know Lee and the team and and Milky and all the boys that do their bit right so they've got a good good setup mm -hmm. here of the right people yeah. really to do the right thing yeah you know? yeah I think I think the um the fans could sit here for I mean I oh, could yeah. sit here for hours and listen to you um, hope we I always hope I haven't bored, hope I haven't bored you with that. It no, wasn't. the problem is we could sit here and talk for another three or four hours. Yeah, and I think we yeah. should we should definitely get we, get get a, we could bring them over to Ireland and show you a bit. Of yeah, proper stuff, proper stuff and scenery. Again, we right back so at the we're start. Going, we're going to Australia again to see Cam, Cam Donald. Donald. Now yeah. we're off to Ireland. Free holidays. But yeah. right at the start of this this podcast, you were shouting at me and berating me for not having the knowledge of Irish road racing. Well, this is the chance. And you're, sa you're yeah, saying, Yeah, but I'm, I've got the, I've got the knowledge us. as a fan. I was All a right. fan boy. Do you know what I, I mean? Watch it, I watch it on TV. YouTube doesn't count. Sure. <laughs> right, Philip, we always end the... Uh, well, normally Steve Plater ends the podcast with some quickfire questions. So I'm going to ask you these questions. Easy. No explanation, just the answer. Joey or John? I think it's Joey. Beer or wine? wine world superbikes or moto gp am i allowed to say both for different reasons no <laughs> one, or, one or the other <laughs> who's give you more free tickets lately so you have to there's Actually, a tactical really, see I'm, there's I'm, a tactical I'm, move in that man's head no, at every it's, point. it's it, it's two different races to be honest you know there's there's production the, and yeah production and stuff and the effort those I think uh, World Superbike is a little bit more rider still orientated. 
than MotoGP is. It's rider, but it's machinery orientated. So you're really, it's two totally different questions, you know, and I respect World Superbike for the rider effort and how those boys are doing it. And MotoGP for, he is the modern, modern computer kid. Yeah. yeah. So he, he said World Superbikes. <laughs> it's about respect. You know, if this was player, he wouldn't have let you get away with all that. It would have been, no, no, just answer. Yeah, but the, there's, like. there's common sense as well. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ginger Hall to Ramsey or Ramsey to Kronk Nimona? Ginger Hall to Ramsey. Yeah? All right. Okay. thousand percent. RC, oh, yeah. RC45 <laughs> or R1? Oh. <laughs> I have to say RC45. Okay. And final one, pineapple or never pineapple on pizza? Oh, never pay up on pizza. Philip. Exactly, that's I what I said. I had so much respect for you, but now I've lost it all after that call. <laughs> <laughs> Philip McCallan, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure, and we'll uh, we'll get you back on shortly. I'm sure the, uh, the fans will want to hear more from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Lee. Lee, Philip McCallan. I think he was lacking in a bit of a commitment throughout his career. Yeah, bit of confi- know, if, lacking if he, confidence. If he just sort of dug a bit deeper and and gritted his teeth, <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he might have won a few. Unbelievable. Yeah, like obviously I, I he's of the age of where I was a little boy watching that, you know what I mean? But yeah, he's just, yeah. Like I know him now for a long time and I've heard some of his stories, but we literally listened to the consistency of pushing and pushing and aggression and, and yeah the guy's definitely one of his own yeah they don't make him like that anymore do no. they no they absolutely well, don't yeah i don't i don't think you would get away with a lot of things that he does now and it's like just a different era i think it's cool his attitude was cool and he pretty much decided what he wanted to do and he was going to do it and mm-hmm. that was it like black and white but uh, but then the beauty of him on the flip side is the fact that he no matter how much commitment he had and willingness to try and go for those five. He ca- he didn't admit defeat, but he, he, he oh, knew he was, realistic. like he said, yeah, he yeah. was on borrowed time a little bit, and he went, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm done here. Yeah, on the other side of just looking intense and crazy is a bad word to use, but committed, yeah. yeah. He's obviously got the level of intelligence to go, mm, this is not for this is not going to happen, and realistically, he is in a whole other life now, which he is a, a very good businessman, and credit to the sport to come here and speak to the fans still and you now do this on this channel is unbelievable 100 percent, yeah he was another one of those riders that i grew up watching and yeah it was an absolute pleasure to sit across from him and chat to him my job just gets better and better oh, what well, firstly me here and then philip mccallan I, I i honestly just feel like a fan do you think this is it this is it i have reached my peak this is my For five you. in a week yeah, yeah. this is 100 percent. glad to be part of it i'm glad you are too but what's coming up on next week's episode, you ask? Well, this. People say, yeah, dream job, best job in the world. From one, from one perspective, yeah, it is. And then the other side that no one really sees, it, yeah, it can be pretty tough, you know. Yeah. But it's, uh, we're there to do a job. And, you know, it's good for us. We've got a good group of guys there. And um, sometimes I think it's a little bit of comfort for the rider to see a face they know as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, sort of it's a bit of... Familiarity. Or, yeah, yeah, that's it. And then obviously we'll just, we'll just support them then until the paramedics get there and then they can get all like the pain relief and stuff like that into them. And the first place you can watch that is right here on TT+. Plus. However, if you're watching it on YouTube, leave your comments down below. You all right, Lee? Oh, you lay. Lee forgot we were still filming, pulls his phone out because his mates just won a race. whoop de do. Well, it's not a race, he's a show jumper. It's called the Grand Prix. All oh, right, horses. That's when you know you've changed when you're hanging out with people that own horses. See you later, Lee. Yeah.